Hey everyone, did you know that every time you send a message on WhatsApp, shop on Amazon, or even check your bank balance, you're actually interacting with different types of databases? Today we're going to explore 15 different types of databases that power our digital world. By the end of this video, you'll understand how data storage works behind the scenes of your favorite apps and websites. What is a database? Before we jump into the types, let's understand what a database actually is. Think of a database as a digital filing cabinet. Just like you organize papers in folders and drawers, a database organizes information in a structured way that makes it easy to store, find, and use later. Imagine you're running a library. You need to keep track of thousands of books, who borrowed them, when they're due back, and member information. Instead of using paper cards, you use a database. It stores all this information electronically and lets you search, update, and manage everything quickly. Databases are everywhere. Your contacts on your phone, your email inbox, Netflix's movie collection, your bank's record of transactions. They're the backbone of almost every digital service we use. Number one, relational databases. Let's start with relational databases. These are like the granddaddy of all databases. Think of them as Excel spreadsheets, but much more powerful and organized. In a relational database, information is stored in tables with rows and columns. Each table represents something specific, like customers, products, or orders. The magic happens when these tables connect to each other through relationships. For example, imagine an online store. You'd have a customer table with names and addresses, a product table with item details and prices, and an order table that connects customers to the products they bought. This connection between tables is what makes them relational. Popular examples include MySQL, which powers websites like Facebook and Twitter, PostGRESQL, used by companies like Apple and Spotify, and Oracle Database that runs many large corporations. These databases use SQL, a special language for asking questions and managing data. Number two, NoSQL databases. Now let's talk about NoSQL databases. The name literally means not only SQL. They were created because sometimes the rigid structure of relational databases doesn't fit every situation. Think of NoSQL like a flexible storage unit where you can put different shaped boxes without worrying about making everything fit into perfect rows and columns. They're great when you don't know exactly what your data will look like ahead of time or when you need to store lots of different types of information. These databases became popular with companies like Google and Amazon who needed to handle massive amounts of varied data from millions of users. They're perfect for storing things like social media posts, sensor data from smart devices, or user behavior on websites. MongoDB is probably the most famous NoSQL database. It's used by companies like Adobe and eBay to handle complex, changing data structures. Number three, document databases. Document databases are a specific type of NoSQL database that stores information in documents. Think of them like digital filing cabinets full of folders. Instead of forcing data into rigid tables, document databases let you store information more naturally. For example, a customer record might include their name, address, order history, and preferences all in one document kind of like having a complete customer file. This is perfect for content management systems, blogs, and e-commerce sites, where each product or article might have different types of information. A blog post document might include the title, author, content, tags, and comments all together. MongoDB is the most popular example, powering everything from startups to major corporations like Bosch and Toyota. Number four, key value databases. Key value databases are the simplest type. Imagine a giant dictionary where every piece of information has a unique name, the key, and its content, the value. Think of it like a coat check at a restaurant. 
you give them your coat, they give you a ticket with a number, the key, and later you use that number to get your coat back, the value. That's exactly how key value databases work. These are incredibly fast because finding information is straightforward. You just need to know the key. They're perfect for caching frequently used data, storing user sessions on websites, or keeping real-time scores in games. Redis is a popular example that's used by companies like Twitter and GitHub to make their websites load faster by storing frequently accessed information in memory. Number five, column family databases. Column family databases flip traditional databases on their head. Instead of storing data in rows, they organize it by columns. Imagine turning a spreadsheet sideways. This might sound confusing, but it's incredibly efficient for certain tasks. Think about analyzing sales data. If you want to find the total sales for each month, a column family database can quickly grab just the sales column without looking at customer names, addresses, or other irrelevant information. These databases are fantastic for analytics, data warehousing, and handling time series data like stock prices or website traffic over time. They can handle massive amounts of data across multiple servers. Apache Cassandra is the most well-known example used by Netflix to recommend shows and by Instagram to handle billions of photos and user interactions. Number six, graph databases. Graph databases are all about relationships and connections. Think of them like a social network map where you can see how everyone is connected to everyone else. Instead of tables or documents, graph databases store data as nodes, things, and edges, relationships between things. For example, in a social network, each person is a node and friendships are edges connecting them. These databases excel at finding patterns and relationships. They can quickly answer questions like, what's the shortest connection between two people? Or which products are frequently bought together? This makes them perfect for recommendation engines, fraud detection, and social networks. Neo4j is the leading graph database used by companies like Walmart to detect fraud and by NASA to manage complex data about space missions. Number seven, time series databases. Time series databases are specialists designed specifically for data that changes over time. Think of them like detailed logbooks that record what happens when. Every piece of data includes a timestamp, making these databases perfect for monitoring systems, IoT sensors, financial data, and website analytics. For example, they can track your heart rate over time monitor server performance, or record stock price changes. What makes them special is their ability to efficiently store and analyze massive amounts of time-stamped data, finding trends and patterns over time periods. InfluxDB is a popular example, used by companies like Tesla to monitor their car fleet and by Samsung to track IoT device performance. Number eight. Object-Oriented Databases Object-Oriented Databases store data as objects, just like in object-oriented programming. Think of them as digital storage for complex real-world things. Instead of breaking down a car into separate tables for engine parts, wheels, and electronics, an object-oriented database can store the entire car as one complex object with all its components and behaviors intact. These databases are great for applications that deal with complex data structures like computer-aided design software, multimedia applications, or scientific research where data has complex relationships and behaviors. ObjectDB and DB4.0 are examples used in specialized applications where the natural object structure needs to be preserved. Number 9. Hierarchical Databases Hierarchical databases organize data like a family tree or company organizational chart. Everything has a parent-child relationship, creating a tree-like structure. Think of your computer's file system, 
Folders contain subfolders, which contain files. That's a hierarchical structure. These databases work the same way, with each piece of data having one parent and potentially many children. While not as common today, they're still used in specific applications like managing organizational structures or representing geographical data. IBM's IMS is a classic example that's still used by some large organizations for legacy systems. Number 10. Network Databases Network databases are like hierarchical databases, but more flexible. Instead of strict parent-child relationships, data can have multiple parents and connections, creating a network-like structure. Imagine a university database, where a student can be enrolled in multiple courses, and each course has multiple students. Network databases can handle these many-to-many -many relationships naturally. While largely replaced by relational databases, they were important in the early days of database development and are still used in some specialized applications. IDMS is an example that's still used in some legacy systems. Number 11. In-memory databases. In-memory databases store all data in your computer's RAM instead of on hard drives. This is like keeping frequently used tools on your workbench instead of in the garage. Everything is immediately accessible. This makes them incredibly fast. We're talking about accessing data thousands of times faster than traditional databases. They're perfect for applications that need instant responses, like real-time analytics, gaming leaderboards, or high-frequency trading. The trade-off is that they're more expensive, and data can be lost if the power goes out, so they're often used alongside traditional databases. Redis and SAP HANA are popular examples used by companies like Snapchat and Adidas for lightning-fast data processing. Number 12. Distributed Databases Distributed databases spread data across multiple computers or servers, working together as if they're one giant database. Think of it like a library system, where books are stored in multiple locations, but you can find any book from any location. This approach provides several benefits. If one server fails, others keep working. They can handle more users simultaneously, and they can store more data than any single computer could handle. Companies like Google and Amazon use distributed databases to serve billions of users worldwide. When you search on Google, your query might be processed by servers in multiple countries working together. Number 13. Cloud Databases Cloud databases run on cloud computing platforms instead of on your own servers. It's like renting a storage unit instead of building your own warehouse. Someone else handles the maintenance while you focus on using the space. The major advantage is convenience. You don't need to worry about hardware, software updates, backups, or scaling. When your app becomes popular and needs more database power, the cloud provider handles the expansion automatically. They're perfect for startups and businesses that want to focus on their products rather than managing database infrastructure. Amazon RDS, Google Cloud SQL, and Microsoft Azure SQL are popular examples used by companies ranging from small startups to large enterprises. Number 14. New SQL Databases New SQL databases try to give you the best of both worlds, the familiar structure and reliability of traditional SQL databases with the scalability and performance of NoSQL systems. Think of them as the latest sports car model that combines classic design with modern technology. They maintain the ACID properties, reliability features that businesses depend on while being able to handle massive amounts of data across multiple servers. These are perfect for companies that need to process millions of transactions reliably while serving users around the world. 
Google Spanner and CockroachDB are examples used by companies that need both reliability and massive scale, like financial services and global e-commerce platforms. Finally, multi-model databases are like Swiss army knives of the database world. Instead of specializing in one type of data storage, they can handle multiple types within the same system. You might store customer information as documents, product relationships as a graph, and time series data for analytics, all in the same database. This eliminates the need to manage multiple different database systems. They're great for companies that deal with diverse types of data and want to simplify their technology stack. Arango DB and Azure Cosmos DB are examples that let you switch between different data models depending on your needs. We've just covered 15 different types of databases, each designed for specific needs and use cases. Let me give you the key takeaway. There's no one-size-fits-all database. Choosing the right database is like choosing the right tool for a job. You wouldn't use a hammer to cut wood or a saw to drive nails. Similarly, you'd use a relational database for a financial system that needs strict accuracy, a graph database for social networks, or a time series database for monitoring systems. The database world is constantly evolving with new types and improvements appearing regularly. The key is understanding your data, your users' needs, and choosing the database that best fits your specific situation. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe for more tech explanations made simple.